Let's go live with Jack Kelly. Welcome to the one of a kind LinkedIn live show that will help you with your job search and advancing your career. We will bring in educated career experts who will share their insights and give you inside tips on how to be successful in your job search. Now let's get into today's show with your host, Jack Kelly. We are live. Yes. So I want to welcome Ashley, Ashley Watkins to our show to LinkedIn live with Jack Kelly. Yay. And happy to be here. Well, thank you. Ashley is a phenomenal career coach, resume writer, former recruiter, all around awesome person. And today, hopefully we can get some really good career advice about job searching, how to network, what to do about your resume. And the cool thing about Ashley is that she was also a recruiter for a number of years. So she kind of knows mm -hmm. the business from a whole bunch of different sides. So I thought if it's okay, we could just jump right in. Yep, ready to go. So, so maybe you could just start telling about yourself. So it's an interesting background. You started recruiting, but then you ended up become an entrepreneur and having your own company. Yes, yes. I started recruiting about 2003-ish. I'm going to date myself with that, but... So you're yeah. like 13, something it, like that, right? It, yeah, add a little and we're good <laughs> on that. Um, but yeah, I started recruiting um, really right out of college. And um, I really got into that sort of haphazardly. I worked with an HR manager who was not a big fan of recruiting more employee relations and systems and processes and operations. Right. Um, that side of HR was her thing. And so she introduced me to the world of employment applications. And I fell in love with recruiting, have never looked back since. Um, I've worked in various industries, um, education, manufacturing, nonprofit, and um, also um, banking. And so with that experience, I used it to launch my business because most people would come to me for advice about interviewing, resumes, and things like that. And I was really good with working with people and getting them over their hurdles or challenges within their job search, and then decide to build a business around that model. So over the years, I started with mm -hmm. strictly resume writing and then branched into interview coaching and job search coaching and really a, a full spectrum from start to finish of the hiring process. So I enjoy working with clients anywhere from the um, mid-career up to the executive level. I do occasionally have an entry-level client, um, but my main client base is more that uh, mid-career up to the executive right. level. That's great. And so what, what drew you to recruiting? Because it sounds like you just took to it. You know, your boss said, hey, would you want to do it? And you're like, uh, okay, I guess I'll do it. You're the boss. Yeah. <laughs> what you, what you, what you like about it? Um, I didn't know at the time. Yeah. Um, and actually it's a funny story. Even while in college, I went to school to actually be either a veterinarian or a forensic scientist. So science is really my jam. And so, so, so this right. is completely. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So yeah. talk about <laughs> career change. Right? right. And so, um, and then I, I realized that math was never my really big thing, but I was always a good writer and good with, um, English and literature and just things like that. So, after taking an assessment, and it was something very similar to like the DISC profile that you take that really tells you where, you know, where you're what's, what's the DISC profile? DISC is a profile assessment that helps you with career management. It really um, gives you an insight look, just to put it in layman's terms, an insight look of your personality and your attributes as they relate to your career. And then you can also see how that coincides with how you are as a person, because we all have our work self. And then we have our personal life self. Right. And so it really introduces you to your core attributes as they are the true you so that you can find job opportunities um, to let you know whether or not you're fit for management. And it lets you know if you're more an intuitive person, an analytical person, Do you know are you more straightforward? How do you interact with people? How do you like to learn? How do you handle conflict? So it really gives you an inside view of yourself and a profile very similar to that on um, that profile assessment helped me identify that sales, um, coaching, and teaching were actually some of my strengths. I was afraid of sales because I'm like, I'm not a salesperson, no. And so that shifted me into more of, I had a choice between marketing and I was very high on human resources. And so since I do love to, I've always loved to help people. Every career I've had, I've been in a position to help people. And so with human resources, I was like, all right, that gives me a little taste of business. There still is some analytical stuff because there's a legal side of human resources. And that's how I shifted into something completely different. It's so um, interesting. Yeah, so yeah. Just to back up a bit. So with the 
D I S K is that D I S C. Yeah, you're either so you put you're in yeah. four categories. So you're either a D, an I, an S, or a C, and they each have different meanings. I'm actually a disk administrator, so I'm able to administer those profiles to to companies who are looking to not necessarily categorize their employees, but find out the best way to reach their employees where they are. So it can teach you from a company side how to better manage your employees, how to lead them um, based on their core attributes, and then as an employee yeah. or a job seeker, it gives you that insight side view of yourself so that you can be matched to a job that best suits your attributes or you can you know learn to to deal with certain things about your career based on how you rank um, whether you're a d an i an s or a c so you can have like a d personality where you're more um straightforward like type a personalities well, can I, can are I, usually can I just, and just ask yeah. you one mm -hmm. for people who are watching it now or mm -hmm. then when we you know record it and upload it can they can they find it themselves or this is just companies that do it let's say they no. want to you can take a disk profile on your own, um, completely on your own, or you can come to an administrator like me who will talk you through your report and help you use that in your real life situations. So if they want to research the disk, um, you definitely could um, could go to you know any you just Google disk okay, profile cool. assessments and learn sounds, more about can it. Can I tell yeah. you something? Because mm -hmm. that sounds so great because so many people going from like yourself right in college you're like hey i want to be a veterinarian you know i want to be in science and then you know all of a sudden you're recruiting maybe if you took that assessment early on you could just just dived into something sooner than later exactly I, I think so many people have that not only people like in college and post-college but you know you could be 30 40 50 years old and still figuring out what do i want to do mm -hmm. and yeah so i think yeah. if you don't mind i'll, I'll I'll, I'll share it with, when we upload it. We'll kind of find a way to say for people to look at because I think that's a really, that's a really interesting thing for people it to, is. to do. And I've taken it multiple times yeah. throughout my career because the assessment itself has progressed. Uh -huh. It's spot on. <laughs> it's spot it on for where for where I am. Mm -hmm. So then would it also say, okay, if if you just to simplify it, maybe I'm sure it's much more complex, but like, okay, you check off, you have this trait, this trait, this trait, so on. And then they would match and say, these are the kind of jobs that you would really be good for. Right. Yes. That's and it's a, yes, yeah. it's a comprehensive list yeah, of all yeah. the types of jobs. And so some, so I enjoy the analytical side of myself. Right. So I like breaking things down, finding a way to solve mm -hmm. problems for, you know, whether it's job seekers or for companies or for hiring managers when right. I'm recruiting. So it does help me um, when I'm coaching clients to show them, especially career changes, because they're not, some people just have no clue what they want to do next. Yeah. A lot this of people don't. Yeah, so there are different um, types of a disc assessments that will help you figure out your next move. Um, some people think they want to go into leadership, so it really helps you see what type of leader you are or what type of leadership you respond to if you're just an individual contributor. So it, it's a very helpful assessment, and I use it a lot with my coaching clients. That makes sense, and mm -hmm. I guess that's a good, whether it's disc or any other thing, it's good to really just kind of take a take mm -hmm. stock, right? Yeah, like and I are, wish I had that at. disc <laughs> back yeah. then. Like yeah. you said, I would not have, you know, did all that spinning my wheels thinking that, yeah, I'm going to be a veterinarian and realizing that while I do like all things science and all things animals, that doesn't mean I have to do it as a career. Exactly. And right. that's just get two, get two little yeah. dogs and that's it. And then you, exactly. you, know, you know what? Yeah. And they keep me very busy <laughs> and I get to flex my vet muscles. <laughs> Can I tell you, I think them as, well. <laughs> as a dog, I have two dogs and two cats, right? And I would suggest, I think you made the right decision because we, as you can imagine, we bring them to vets. Mm hmm it does not look like a fun job. It seems like, okay, yeah. oh, I'm gonna take care of little cute kitties. But meanwhile, that, do you ever see the gloves that they put on? Like yes. the vets, they put on these freaking like hazmat kind all of, the, yeah. because the cats will scratch your eyes out. So <laughs> that, is, that is, I think you're probably better off because even though that's a really meaningful yeah. job, but it, it and I hear so, also it doesn't yeah. it pay that well too, by the way. It depends if you have a really yeah. good, yeah. you know, good little community and people, yeah. you know, respect you and you're the go to person. Yeah, it could be very lucrative. But the thing that got me about it is the people interaction. 
the people mm-hmm. that were coming, you know, that would be coming to me as a vet, typically you take your pet to the vet just for, you know, routine yeah. you know, checkups, but usually something's wrong with them and people yeah. are, you know, upset and, you know, yeah. and thinking that I would have to euthanize a, a pet or something like that. Yeah. I was just like, nah, I don't think so. So I still got my feel for, uh, for the vet stuff and the animals and, you know, and everything. I just volunteered at, with hospice and took one of my dogs there and we got that fixed. See, see, <laughs> and that's what, and you know, it's so interesting you say that because that's what people could do with their careers. So because most people are multidimensional, you know, they're not just mm-hmm. great at one, they have a bunch of different things, but maybe they're really strong. Like you're you from just speaking to you for a couple of minutes now. And then all right, we'll break back the wall. She and I talked yesterday too. So I know that's how I knew she had two little dogs. Right. So but people are multidimensional. So like you come across very gregarious, friendly, enthusiastic, motivated, all that kind of stuff. But then, you know, you probably have some other sides too, that then you could do on the side. Same thing with careers, right? right. Where you can maybe mm-hmm. choose one, but you don't have to give up if you have passions for other things, you can do right. that on the side. And that's what I usually coach my clients is think yeah. about those things that you really love to do. Mm-hmm. And then think of a way that you can monetize it. Think of a way that you can turn it into a career. Is that something that employers yeah. want right now? Is there a specific problem that you can solve for the employer? And that will give you an idea if there's a need or a market for what you do, especially since we're you know, trying to learn this new normal of the yeah. the pandemic right and so it's so important for people to understand where do your where are your skills needed most and how can you get your skills in front of the right employer and so for me just because i like those things and you know i still like science i still like all things law because at one point in my life i wanted to be a lawyer mm-hmm. you know and i got that bit of law you know the involvement that i wanted with that through hr um, as well i work with, with people in hr so recruiting gave me the the sales acumen that that report said that I had, right? I'm able to use that because I'm able to, I have to sell the company that I'm working for to an individual. So you really can find out a lot about yourself through these assessments. It may not seem like, you know, you get this report and like, what do I do with this? But it really is a great way for you to find out, you know, when you see those qualifications on the job posting, but then it it lists those soft skills. Well, you have a report that can confirm every soft skill if you're a match for that. Whereas everybody else kind of says, I'm a people person or I'm good with communicating and all of these things. And there's really no way to back it up because they haven't written their resumes effectively, you know, to demonstrate those, um, you know, those soft skills you have a report that backs up everything that you say about yourself. So this is why I usually try to push that with clients. Like, let's go through the DISC process first so you can learn about yourself. Learn what the match is, because if there's Mm -hmm. a mismatch, that could be the reason why you're job hopping, why you work for careers and you get burnt out so easily. There may be something about the types of jobs that you think you're good at um, or you think that you should target that maybe don't, they don't fit to the core of you, to your values, to you know the things that you find important or the way that you interact with other people. So it is very helpful. That's interesting. Do you find when you deal with your clients that you'll give them the results and they don't feel comfortable with it? Like, wait, no, I don't, you know, mm-hmm. I don't have these attributes. And then it becomes weird because yeah. you're saying, wait, you, you have it, you should use it or they have it, but they don't like doing that. Does that come up? Yeah, it, it does a lot. And so I think when we chatted a little bit yesterday, I revealed that really at the core of who I am, I'm very introverted in a very, in a lot of ways. But, it's so hard to believe. Yeah. But based on the career <laughs> that I chose, yeah. I have to be very <laughs> extroverted. So again, while my report reveals that I'd like to be in smaller groups, mm-hmm. um, I like to work alone and stuff like that. I do thrive in those situations because I'm able to help people. But if I'm put in a situation where I'm just around people like at a, a outdoor concert or you know or something like that no that's that's not my thing but you put me in a room of people who I'm teaching something to I'm working through helping them find something that they that they like again it's all this being the support person being the help person being the coach those I scored very high in those areas so that's cool. very so cool. revealing hey, what kind of people do you help I think you said it's like really across the board Yeah, across the board, they're mid-career to executive level clients in various industries. Um, It could be sales, marketing, accounting, IT, um, nonprofit, 
um, manufacturing. So I work with a lot of engineers mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, people who, you know, really do, you know, blue collar workers, it, it really doesn't, you know, doesn't matter. When we connect, if there's a way that I'm able to, you know, to assist, I work with clients from, you know, from any field. Um, I've learned, I learned so much from my clients, because even though I may feel like I've done hundreds of sales resumes, there's always mm -hmm. somebody that I can learn something from. Um, so I do learn a lot from my clients and how to work with clients by listening to what their needs are and adjusting my processes and services along the way to meet those needs. What would usually when they come to you, is there like two or three common things mm -hmm. that they say they need help with? Yes, usually people find me because of um, the fact that I'm a certified resume writer. Okay. Um, and it, what the, the main issue with the resume is that I'm, I'm applying for these jobs and I'm not hearing anything back. I know I'm qualified. No one will give me a chance. Or somebody, I've been working at this job for 10 to 15 years. It's time for me to do something new. My, my kids are out of the house. I want to do what I want to do right now. So um, those are typically the reasons why people come to me. And then through conversation and getting to know them a little bit better, I uncover some other things that I feel like could be beneficial to them um, to help support them in, in meeting their, their targeted goals. All right, this might be a dumb question, but for certified resume writers, how, like what, where, I'm like, where do you get where certified? Where do you get certified? <laughs> yeah, how does that work? <laughs> like I see that with career coaches too. Like what's, <laughs> right. what, like, there, what goes behind it? Yeah, so there are multiple organizations uh -huh. um, where you can get a career coaching certification, interview coaching, LinkedIn coaching, um, all of these different things. Mm -hmm. um, I actually am certified through the National Resume Writers Association. It is the only nonprofit organization that supports, um, you know, resume writing um, for career, career services, professionals and things like that. So that's the organization that I joined and I'm certified through them. So I am an NCRW, which mm -hmm. is a nationally certified resume writer. There are other organizations like the um, Professional Association of Resume Writers and Career Coaches. So they offer the CPRW, which is a certified professional resume writer. So there you Maybe on LinkedIn, you see a lot of acronyms you behind do. someone's name. Oh my name. God, I, you see some yeah. of them, like it, it's longer than their name. It goes, exactly. it goes like <laughs> off the page. It goes like down three page, you know. <laughs> Exactly. So, um, so yeah, the National Resume Writers Association is, um, I'm, you know, a member of there and a former board member, um, but oh, I have cool. my certification through them. I've been certified since 2016. And so what you have to do, there's an extensive process um, with that. And I think this, the process with the National Resume Writers Association is far more comprehensive than, than a lot of the services out there out there I found. And so through that, um, you actually have to go through a testing process. So you have to be tested on grammar, your knowledge of resume writing, and then you go on to the written test where they give you a profile and you actually have to build it out like it's a real candidate. And then there is a um, committee of the certification committee that reviews that information to determine whether or not you, you get your certification or you need to retest. So it sounds like if, if whoever's watching this, and again, who's maybe watching once we upload it, mm -hmm. you know, down the road to other, other social media sites, it probably behooves them if they want to sew in to help with their resume, you know, like number one, they should definitely look at you, but then number two, <laughs> exactly. find somebody who has a designation. So at least there's, Right. There's something behind it. Is that, is that fair to say? It, it is because most organizations, mm -hmm. if, especially the National Resume Writers Association, you have to do, um, do continuing education to show that you have knowledge of the current resume standards. So it's not a one and done type situation. You have to keep that certification. Um, the same thing, I'm also a nationally certified online profile expert as well, which is um, basically a fancy way to say, I can help you build your LinkedIn profile. Okay. <laughs> and so, um, or any you know online branding tool that you're using. All right, all right. Um, this is good. I don't mean to interrupt, but this is really yeah, good stuff. Right. So, so let's go back to the resume sec. Um, <clears throat> Well, you say something like people get so, you know, just so worked up about the resume, just they don't know what to do, yes. what to be, you know, how to put it together and all that kind of stuff. Um, and you said, keep up to date. Do, do you have, do people have to worry about, oh, okay, this is not in fashion right now. This is not in style. I mean, like, what are some things that like you should, you can tell people don't, don't stress out about this. Don't worry. Yeah. So it, 
generally speaking, yeah. the average you know job seeker is not going to know every single trend um, about right. resume. So that's one thing. You're not going to know every single trend and trend, trends shift just based on what the job market is doing at the time. Um, so there was a time when it was okay for you to have a generalized resume. So that's something that we're, you know, I work with clients to transition them out of being so generic, just being right. this um, conglomerate of everything that they've done forever in their career. Um, now resumes have shifted to a more targeted focus, meaning that you need to, um, you know, work with keywords for the applicant tracking system. If you're applying for a marketing position, then you need to demonstrate your marketing success throughout your resume, whether you're a career changer or you've been doing marketing for 15, 20 years. So those things have shifted a little bit because you used to just kind of copy and paste the job description and plop everything on your resume. Now everything has to be a accomplishment based. So there's a, a extreme focus for people to, you know, make sure that their resumes demonstrate their success, show the numbers, quantify your achievements. You'll hear tons of coaches and resume writers across the board giving that advice. And so that is still true. Um, but if your resume is not about the fancy design and all the bells and whistles, that's not what gets you a job. Yeah. It's the people who that you have to be you know, connected to that actually help you get those jobs or put you in a position to land those jobs. But it's the way that you demonstrate your success. Content is always key. Content is key over formatting. Formatting just helps your resume or your content be visually appealing so that they continue to read it because you only have a certain, you know, a few seconds to grab someone's attention to give it the second look. Um, I think there's a misconception when they hear, when job seekers hear the advice that, oh, you, it only takes somebody six seconds to, or seven seconds now yes. that it's it's been released. Right. Um, so six, six or seven seconds for someone to make a decision to hire you. That's not necessarily true. The first look is about six or seven seconds, but your resume will be looked at multiple times throughout the process. So we take closer looks when we're doing the initial screenings for phone interviews, or if you have an interview with a panel, your resume is being reviewed with a fine tooth comb. So it's not just the six, seven seconds and that's the end of the world. No, that initial look for me to decide whether or not you go in my yes, no, or maybe pile. That's the six to seven seconds. And then you get closer looks the longer you're in the hiring process. So um, I think just being able to understand how the hiring processes work usually help job seekers have a, a I guess, a, um, a more effective job search and feel more confident about their skills and ability and their ability to articulate or communicate that value to employers. So that's what I do as a coach is give them that inside look of the hiring processes, but then educate them along the way so that they make a greater impression the further along mm -hmm. they go in the process. That's great. So I have a couple of questions for people that I want to just say to you, but then I, if you don't mind, I want to go to what you said about you want to find people to help you with the search to reach out to, to get mm -hmm. you in the door. So after that, maybe we could talk a little bit about networking and any sure. kind of, okay. Absolutely. So one is, I'll paraphrase it. Okay. It's something like, <laughs> what, what are things when you see a resume, like makes you really just cringe and be like, oh my gosh, this is, this is really bad. Yeah. Um, Probably when information is crammed into one page, because there's this myth that your resume has to be one page. So it doesn't page. have to be one page. It no, be... it doesn't. Your resume needs to be as long as it has to be to communicate your value as it relates to your target role. So, so that it could be, could two, be, it could be, it could be one page for somebody who hasn't really had that many jobs. It could be two pages. Typically, the resumes that I work with are two pages. Um, if you're an executive with a lot of experience, with a lot of successes, it may be better for you to have a three-page resume. If you're applying for a federal job, it may be nine pages um, because there's no length you know, restrictions with federal resumes. So the length of the resume is far less important than the content you include in that resume. And the other thing, it's so interesting too, like with resume, as a recruit, I've been, you know, recruiting for like going on 25 years now, is that mm -hmm. I, I do look at the first, you know, the first thing that they're doing, right? The most recent job. Right. And tense, whatever, you know, I don't time it, but you know, you just really want to see, I'm, I'm working, you know, on a job assignment that has like, like 10 criteria. And I'm going to look, do they have it? And if they have check, 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 I'm like, perfect. You know what I mean? Right. Then I'm going to mm -hmm. look down, see what they did, you know, the job before, did I see some movement? And if I did, then I'm good. You know, then I could go more in depth, but now I know, okay, I got exactly. the right person right there. The other mm -hmm. question um, someone asked was this, with the ATS system, you know, you hear so much debate about like, you know, there's this camp of people like these ATS, they're just robots and they're standing mm -hmm. in the way of getting a job and others are like, oh, I got to find all these keywords to put in there. 
Mm. What, what's, what's, since you brought it up, like what do, you, what do you take when you do a resume that you have to keep in mind that it's gonna have to go through some, an applicant track, you know, when I say it's right. an applicant tracking system for people aren't familiar with this, you know, I guess what, what would you say, the software that these companies use? When you click submit on a job application and you, feel like your resume is going like where is my resume going it's going into that database so that's what the applicant tracking system is that's pretty much all you really need mm -hmm. to know um, from a job seeker standpoint about the applicant tracking system and understanding that it's not a robot that is just rejecting you know the the applicant tracking system itself cannot screen for anything that the employer has not set up so the employers are setting the parameters within mm -hmm. that system to make the hiring process faster because when i worked in you know i've worked before the applicant tracking system and i'm sure you have too it was you know there's a human being wait are you saying being, i'm old well, no, but <laughs> you have okay. 15, I have 15, you have 25, you know what I mean. Well, I started in elementary <laughs> you school. You were there, yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's what it is. I was a, I was a recruiting prodigy. I know, right? Grade. Yes. Yeah, we'll, we'll go with that. Yeah. Okay. Prove us wrong. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, so yeah, so that applicant tracking system, yeah. before that, physically having to review, you know, 50 to 100 resumes by hand, that takes a very long time. So the candidates are complaining because the process is taking so long, you know, so long. So now we have an applicant tracking system, which will screen for the same things that we're screening for, which is those competencies, skills, position titles, all of those things, right? And so the applicant tracking system is put in place to help the employer screen your information faster. It's not there to reject you per se, because it's not going to reject by itself. The employer is setting those parameters. So that's one thing. Um, but you do have to pay attention to formatting of your resume, um, any elements as far as design that you want to add to your resume. You have to understand how those work in the system, because you may think it looks really good on your end because you're looking at it maybe in PDF format or as a Word document document. But once that information is entered into the applicant tracking system and parsed from the document that you upload, you have to make sure that it looks the way it's supposed to look and that all of the information is there. I can't tell you how many resumes I've gotten from people that their contact information isn't there because they put it in the header of the document. And the headers and footers, that information isn't screened by the applicant tracking system. So anything that you put in the header, you need to assume that it it doesn't exist. I wasn't aware of that. Wait, wait. So so mm -hmm. if you have the header, meaning like you have a formatted formatted on the top, it says Jack Kelly has my phone number, email, but if it's formatted a certain way, it just won't take. It, well, they Not that see it's it formatted a certain way if it's entered on the document you know on a word uh -huh. document you can click and then now you have access to the header right. and the footer of the document which really shows up as a shadow sort of that information is not read so if you want to put a page number there or something huh. it doesn't get it doesn't make it into the system it's so weird it's like what why, why i guess that's just one of the glitches because it's not things. a part of the document if you think about it it's the inside label right of your document there's no way for well, the see, system that tip to, to alone, read that insight. See, can I tell you, actually, that tip alone is so valuable because, like, to be fair, mm -hmm. I wasn't aware of that. I, I, I can't tell you how many resumes I've looked over my career. And so that someone can have the best resume, but if they just have it formatted that way, they can't even get contacted. Exactly, because we have nothing to contact you with. Oh, my with God, that's ridiculous. Then... I swear to God, I never, I didn't know that's. I didn't know that about it. Right. And, and while we crazy. could go to, yeah, and we could go to the system, sure, and, you know, trace it back to right, whatever right. profile. But, but, but you know, why would people we do busy. that? Like, why, you're not right. do why that would unless, we do that? Yeah. Like, the only way you do that is like someone is so amazingly awesome to do it. But if they're like, Better than average, like, yeah, it's, it's, I'm not going to do that actual work. I've done Let's it be before. Yeah, yeah, I've done it before. If somebody, you know, was otherwise great and it was just that technicality, yeah. I may reach out to them and, yeah. you know, and say, hey, here's the thing. Stop. <laughs> Don't wow. do this again. Um, because you can see the information. But again, the work that it takes to find that individual and match them to, exactly. um, you know what I mean? Like, they, you have to be great and you have to assume yes. that you're not the exception. All right. So what else? Okay. So I, I really never knew that was the case for that. PDF better than Word? Word better than PDF? Does it matter? It depends on the employer system. They usually will tell you at the upload function. Oh, okay. They'll tell you. I was going to say, how mm -hmm. are you supposed to know? They'll yep, say yep. which one they prefer. Okay. They will tell you the preferred right. format. And usually it's it's Word and then it may be a plain text file or, you know, maybe PDF. Word and PDF are usually the 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 most general ones that you'll see, but they'll give you different options, but you definitely can't right. upload it as a picture. Um, right, let's get a scan really, document. So. so let's get really nerdy here. Like, so what other things 
So, so when people are saying, because you, you probably hear this all the time, you know, we're mm -hmm. like, oh, I try to get in, but the, you know, ATS won't, you know, let me get it through. What other things like with the, with the header and the footer that you may not even ever think of that could just not just qualify you, but just, just not help you. Yeah, when people leave information off of the resume, because okay. there are, um, there may be knockout questions, meaning that you answer the question in a way that's not favorable to that employer, then it automatically, you, you know, say answer questions that in the resume should address what they're looking for, or, or is this like if other it could parts be that. Mm -hmm. Because if there's so if there's a location requirement, right. so if I if there's a position in Atlanta, Georgia, right, it's a territory sales position. So that means that I probably need to have knowledge of the Atlanta area. Right. Well, my resume says San Francisco, California, right, because that's where I am. Well, that system that yeah. could typically be, you know, potentially be a knockout because they're looking for Atlanta, Georgia, or the surrounding. And then here you are from a completely different state. So that could be an eliminating um, factor, again, which is why it's so important for you to have a conversation with a human being so that you can tell them, well, I'm in yeah. San Francisco right. right now, but I have family in Atlanta, Georgia, and I can relocate the minute I get a job offer. I have, I'm very familiar with the area. I went to school in that area, you know, or whatever. You can have that conversation with a human. The applicant tracking system doesn't lend that. There's nothing that you can really say. Your address is your address. Um, so... Uh, you know, it does help to always get in contact with people, whether you apply online or not. And so, um, so that definitely pay attention to, you know, that could be a knockout. It could be questions that they ask, maybe a little mini assessment before the application that asks, do you have X number of years of experience? Do you have experience with this particular software? You answer, you know, wrong on those, like if you say no, and the answer should be yes, Okay, well, then you're not going to get considered. So there are multiple things, layers to the applicant tracking system where the employer, again, has set that parameter. It's not just the system itself. Wow. The computer can't do what the human yeah. doesn't tell it to do, right? So, you know, I do have to educate people with that case. So not to be so angry with the ATS, that it's a system to help for screening, but it's not the only way for you to get a job. So so I had a question that Sandra was asking about, um, Bear with me, I paraphrase. With uh, the cover letter, is what it, should you have a cover letter and not have a cover letter? Does it matter? Does it make a difference? Um, I always say yes, only because is your cover letter going to get read every time? Probably mm. not. Um, and that's just the truth of it. Um, but neither is your entire resume. But that doesn't mean you just send your resume in with one job on it because they may not read the rest, right? You still submit that full resume. So submit the, the cover letter as if it's a part of the resume. So, you know, if you're going to upload a resume, then you need to be prepared to upload that cover letter. It is a differentiator um, to some degree because it's an opportunity for you to explain things that may not be so easily apparent by someone reading your resume um, because again the resume is only a snippet of you know of what you do as it relates to that particular role there may be some backstory oh I'm relocating I have a gap because of this or I'm not working right now because of this you can answer a lot of questions that's that the um, hiring team may have when they're considering you for the for the role so the cover letter is very important the reason why the cover letter um, or one of the major reasons why cover letters are not read when they you know and I want to break that myth right now they don't get read because the average person is hopping over to Google finding a template, plopping their, their information into it. If you found it on the first page of your Google search, guess who else found, found it? Your competition. So why are you using the same cookie cutter letter, letter that everybody else could use, right? So personalize it give your story talk to, you know as if you're talking directly to the hiring manager about why they should hire you a well written cover letter is 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 never frowned upon you know if you write your letter make an impact show your value it's more likely to get read is it going to get read by that recruiter probably not we have hundreds that we're reviewing aside from yours but that hiring manager who's looking at a much smaller pool of candidates they may look at 5 i may look at 500 right mm -hmm. So I'm not going to read that because that's, you know, I'm not going to read it unless I need, need that need to know information, but the hire manager is more than likely going to read it every time. That's so, so, that's so, so yes, good. It's so good to know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I bet you like with, when you said about living in one place, but 
applying somewhere else, I guess that where uh, comes in handy too, to have a cover letter and say, hey, all right, although you see the address on my resume is San Francisco, I've already moved to, you know, Alabama and I have the residence there, but, you know, and so on. So right. at least they could connect it instead of just exactly. saying, no, we just want someone local. Right. Um, and then there are ways on the resume that you can add maybe a, a one-liner that you just say right under your address or something. Don't interfere with that formatting of your, you know, of your document, but just, you know, add a one-liner to say that you're open to relocation in these particular areas or that you're in progress to relocate into that area. Just a simple one line and you may bold it so it stands out. Um, if that's been an issue in the past that you get, keep getting rejected because of your location, put a one-liner on the resume. That makes sense. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, Robert, actually, it's kind of related. Robert was asking about with the um, uh, with the application part of it. Like, mm -hmm. why is it? And this, and I hear this from so many people. I know it's what like, you're asking. <laughs> why do you like you have to fill out this long application when they then they ask you just upload your resume? Like, if, why do I need both? And then why do I send the application and I never hear back? Yeah. So the thing is with the um, so your resume is a summary of what you've done. It's your career brochure. It's not your autobiography, right? So you may only have three space for three jobs that are relevant to the job that you're targeting on your resume. The application is a legal document. There are some companies that will take the information from your resume and parse it into the application so that you don't have to duplicate it. But your resume is not a legal document. They have to have that application on file, which is a separate mm -hmm. document, although it has the same information on it. Now, it's a shame to me that somebody will have to go through yeah. a two hour application process to get rejected in six minutes. That, you know, to me, that's the craziest yeah. thing. It makes a horrible candidate experience. I don't like that either. Um, but that's normally why there's a resume. Interesting. And then there's also an application. The when application we say the legal is document, is it? in part because i've had this with job seekers with candidates in the past they'll put something down on their on on their resume which is maybe not 100 percent accurate right and they could get but then and i advise people hey be careful because when you fill out the application they're going to do a background check particularly yes. i place mid to senior level executives and you know they're going to do background checks these are senior people mm -hmm. they're paying you know two three hundred four hundred five hundred thousand dollars of course they're going to check exactly and with it when it's so for some reason, a resume, you could kind of, all right, whatever, but they're like, oh, we need the application because then we know you said you graduated from this school and you really didn't, or mm -hmm. you have this certification, you really didn't. Exactly. That's, and so it's a legal uh, document. So if they find uh, out that you've falsified some information, you can lose your job. And in some some states, um, I've read before, um, don't quote me on this, do your yeah. own research on it, um, but it could be, you know, a criminal offense um, for that. I mean, a, a misdemeanor, not, nevertheless, but... It, it, you, you have to be really careful about that. You can work somewhere for 10 years. If they find out that you've done something, put something on the application that was not true. I've seen this happen, um, you know, several times throughout my career. You could be fired for that. Yeah. So you want to make sure that anything that you put on that employment application is true and it's verifiable. Trust me, I've seen it yeah. firsthand several times where mm -hmm. you have a candidate who you know, went through a lengthy process went through all the hoops, do a background check, and they find there's a discrepancy and they withdraw or send in the offer. Yes. Oh, that's how that's I got my first HR job. Honestly, brutal. I was, and I, and I always coach clients like, don't, don't worry about being second choice. I was the second choice. Oh, yeah. for, <laughs> yeah, so for so my HR job. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the offer was rescinded from somebody yeah. else because they falsified something on their application. And, but I bet you when they looked at yours, there's me. I bet you when they look at yours, they would double like careful, right? They were probably looking at everything. Just yeah, to make sure we can't do this again. Right? Everything. We can't make another mistake. References were called, background <laughs> check, everything. <laughs> everything was done. Isn't life so funny? If it wasn't for that person, I always I always like marvel at things like that. If it wasn't for that person who mm -hmm. lied or did something, whatever, on their resume, you may not have got the job that may not have led to whatever that led to what being where you right. are now. Is that yeah. it's it's mm -hmm. so wild. Yeah, uh, yeah, because right after out. that, that's when I got the contract with Hyundai. Hyundai came to um, Montgomery, Alabama. That's where they're yeah. um, headquartered in the um, in the United States. And it was a contract role that I got shortly after. Um, maybe I was at my first job, of maybe a yeah. year and a half, almost two years, and got that contract. That contract with Hyundai set me up for all of the opportunities that happened so, uh, later. I wouldn't be here if it was not for that person who falsified their application, had their offer rescinded, 
here I am. <laughs> yeah, it's so, <laughs> so amazing. I, I should do, I should do like a series of, of people who had these just like serendipitous things that if it wasn't for this one little thing, right. Yeah. Being at the right place at the right yeah. time, that the career arc yeah. would be so totally different. Cause no one gave me a chance before yeah. that because I had no practical HR mm -hmm. experience. All I had was my job that I had been working at the pharmacy um, in customer service. And then I had an HR degree. Everybody else had practical HR experience. So you know, it was hard. It was definitely hard for me. So I, you know, definitely sympathize and empathize with my clients who have those similar situations. But now there are a lot more things that we can do to get people, you know, on the path that they want to be on. So yeah, that's so what, what you, you mentioned about where if someone for the resume, what if one of the questions I had was something to the effect of like, what do you do, especially with COVID now, where you might might have been out of work for one month, two months, three months, and then you have some people who, and this is not part of the question, this is like yeah. from, I'm just adding on to this. Mm -hmm. But then I hear from a lot of people, because we have this thing, we have this we, we meet up where we do these Zoom calls with people who just to help give advice, guidance. Mm -hmm. And there's some people who maybe November, December, you know, were downsized and they get, oh, okay, you know, I'll just wait to the holidays and then you get January and it's a little, you know, start, slow start. Then all of a sudden you go into COVID. So now they've been out of work for a long period of time. Right. What would you suggest, you know, even for a short period or a long period of time, like what do they do for the resume? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and then we could talk about LinkedIn also, other, like, yep. what, and for LinkedIn, what do you do to show that, you know, you're doing something. You've been doing something. Yeah. yeah. Um, the, the best thing for someone to do um, and the, the go to advice that I give is there are ways to volunteer mm -hmm. within your field. Right. There are courses that you can take to still, you know, stay abreast of your industry. Mm -hmm. You want to show that you're mm -hmm. still actively engaged within your career, whether right. it's through industry associations, volunteering, contracting, freelancing, um, whatever mm -hmm. it is to for one, you want to have some income flowing in. So those are great opportunities to do that. If you're volunteering, it may not be a paid you know, position, but it puts you closer to individuals who may be involved in some of the right. same things who can give, you know, give you a heads up about opportunities. So, you know, think of every instance, it may not be paid, but it's building you up for, you know, you can use it for your resume, you can use it to meet new people. Um, you want to show some sort of activity. Something, right? You have to do so you yeah. have to show you're doing something, you're not just sitting right. around and and be ready to have those yeah. conversations. You don't necessarily have to lead with that because you want to lead with your value at all times. Um, but you need to be ready to answer those questions in your interview about what happened. Why haven't you been working so long? You need to be able to explain that information. Um, and then, uh, you know, with that, you can do that through your cover letter. You can actually put it, you know, somewhere on your resume if right. it's appropriate. Um, you know, you want to talk to people to educate them about what's happening. Let your, let your network know that you were laid off. Um, you may reach out to people individually that you used to work with just to let them know what's going on with you because if they understand what you want and what you need they they can more easily help you get to your next opportunity you, so that's so do you, do you find too where or what would you recommend if let's say a person has a chance to get a job mm -hmm. but you know they're at a certain level you know they're up here vp whatever it may be and it's much lower or even it's you know working whether driving an uber at, at home depot would you suggest to your, your 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 clients, hey, take those jobs because at least you're doing something, you're getting money coming in, maybe you get benefits, or maybe wait for the perfect job? It depends on your situation. The first thing yeah. you want to do when you lose your job, whether it's, you know, whether you quit or whether you were downsized right. or your position got eliminated, you know, whatever the case, assess your financial situation. Yeah. That's going to tell you what you need to do, whether or not you can go, you should go work for Uber, you know, bag groceries at Walmart or, you know, whatever the case it may be. Right. And so, um, so that's first and foremost, assess your financial situation and see realistically, how long can you afford to be out of work? And then if the answer is like most individuals, you know, can't, you know, stand to miss, but a couple paychecks before it's, you know, it's really crucial, right? And so in those cases, take the job, because in no matter whether it's in your field or not, you are far more attractive to recruiters, employers, whoever, when you're working, than when you're not working. Uh, I feel like there should be an urgency around those people who are able right. to, you know, to pick up and work immediately. Um, but that's just, it's the psychology of it, you are more attractive to employers when you're already working. It, it is that the case, right? Mm -hmm. And in a way, it's like a, it's unfortunate in a mm -hmm. way, because if you just, in the, you know, like we talked earlier, if you're in the wrong place at the wrong time, you're downside, but you're a fantastic person, you're a great employee, yeah. but it's just a bad break. 
they do look at you a little differently, like, hmm, what went what, wrong? What, what's what, going hmm, on? What, what happened? What did Why you is there a gap this long? What, yeah. what happened to you? You know, and, and yeah. usually it's the explanation that you can do easily on your cover letter to yeah. explain that. And if people get it, they're like, aha, uh-huh, and we probably, you know, can move past it. Let's, you know, let's get on to your skills yeah. and you're fit for the role. You know, if there's anything that you feel like it's holding you back from getting a job and you keep seeing that thing repeatedly, there's a theme as to why you're not getting these calls, address that. Yeah. Address it up front, you know, especially, um, you know, in situations where you've been laid off or situations where you're moving, go ahead and explain those things. If you're an executive and you have no desire to lead people anymore and you just want to be an individual con- contributor to the, the second wave of your life, say that. You you know, it'll make much more sense. Do you find this too? I find that with people, what happens if, let's say, they were downsized and maybe they're out for a while, mm-hmm. it hurts, right? You, you lose your self esteem, your self confidence, right. you feel bad. Right. And then when you go for interviews, and let's even talk about not COVID because you get these, the Zoom, instead of the in-person, and then you're meeting, you know, you and I are meeting in person, mm-hmm. you could almost feel the, 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 the negative energy. Because uh-huh. And you the desperation. Tell, yeah. yeah. yeah, And you can mm-hmm. tell it's like, oh, I got to talk about this again. And then they like sound a little surly and a little angry. They have to talk and they're making, and then they're acting like you, the interviewer, are a bad person because you're asking this question, but you got to ask this question. So it exactly. becomes this downward spiral. Did you, mm-hmm. did, did you, did you I, come across that? I've seen that a lot in recruiting and I see it a lot with my clients. By the time they get to me, they're so frustrated Yes, and it, you know, they are just mind blown that I, I know I do great work, but I, and I thought that when I started this process, I was hopeful. Yeah. And then over time, yes. you know, when it's taking longer to find positions, especially the higher up you go, the less likely you are to find those opportunities just readily posted on the job board. So when they find that, okay, this is taking way longer, it does, it eats away at their self-esteem, their confidence. Is then so I do a lot of confidence work with you know with clients because regard your situation does not define you, how you work through that situation, move past it to get to your next step. That that's what defines. How do you, you. do that? Yeah. Because I think I, I personally what I'm seeing, you know, in terms of this this time period more so than ever, is the having to deal with mental health issues like how to get yes. past these things, how to how to go into an interview, how to network, how to talk to people without just wearing it on your sleeve where it's so noticeable. Because we're all like that. Like if you see someone, even if you want to help them, but they just come across so bitter and angry and they talk negative about their coworker, their part, past coworkers or boss. Right. It's like, I don't even know if I want to deal. There's just there's mm-hmm. too much baggage here. So like yeah. when you say you work with them, like what do you do to help turn it around? Um, really, we just talk through different, you know, scenarios because they yeah. already have in their head this worst case scenario, mm-hmm. right? And that's what they live by every single day. What do you mean worst case? What, what, what do you mean by worst case? I'm scenario? never going to get a job. Oh, okay, nobody's well, like, ever going to hire. Is she? Yeah, that's rough. They, right, so right, they, right. They dug a really big hole now. That, exactly. Really... And usually, it's because they've been spinning their wheels. Yeah. getting advice from multiple sources, doing this and doing that. And it's really of no faults of their own, but you have to be open to that help. Right. Um, you know, you have to be open in order to receive. And, you know, so we talk through, you know, those things to see what are the issues and what if we can turn those around? What if I could give you a strategy to help you turn that, you know, turn that thing around even just a little bit, because even that small win is better than what you've been going through. Do they give you that like skepticism when you're doing that? Like, Oh "Oh." yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I've heard this before, Ashley. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's why it's so helpful for the clients that I've had in the past who speak openly about working with me, who have, you know, left recommendations on my LinkedIn profile, who've left reviews for my website. Um, so that you can see real life people who have worked with me, who it's worked for, especially during this time. Um, I, my clients are still getting jobs right now, even in a pandemic, clients are getting jobs. Are they having to shift um, a little bit and be more open um, to things? Are they marketing themselves differently? Absolutely, because you have to meet the employer where they are and respond to their needs you know, for the current standards, you can't say, well, I used to do it this way. And I used to be able to meet with people face to face. That may not be, you know, your option right now. So you have to be willing to adjust to evolving business needs. And those clients who understand that they use it perform a whole lot better in their job search. And they're more open to, um, you know, accepting advice and understanding that there are more than one way, you know, there's more than one way to skin a cat. So there may be something that another coach told you or something that I told you, and maybe another coach has a different way of doing it. It doesn't mean that we're wrong. I mean, there's more than one way to, you know, to get up in the morning. Some people get up in the left, some people get up on the right. 
they're still up, right? Yeah. It doesn't mean, you know, <laughs> you know so, yeah. you know, be open to, you know, to getting advice, but you have to stick to it, track your progress, tweak what didn't work, but always keep pushing, keep pushing forward. That's great about it. And I think, you know what, you come across so positive and motivated. It's infectious. The same way I said, wait, you yeah. go for an interview, right? And you come across mm -hmm. negative and what have you, it impacts them. Say, yeah. it's in reverse too. If, you, if you're talking to someone who's like upbeat and positive, enthusiastic, even right. the most hardened person eventually will, you know, <laughs> you get yeah. drawn into it. Exactly. I mean, I tell people like gratitude yeah. will take you a long yeah. way in your job search. No matter what's going on bad, you have to find something, something to grab, you know, to grab hold to, to say, this is positive. This is something that's going great in my life. If your kids are doing well, pat yourself on the back yeah. for that. There's somebody whose kids not doing so well. So that's something positive. You woke up today. That's positive. You have all this knowledge and skills that employers will eat up as long as they meet you. That's positive. Now we work on those things that we know everything that's great about you. Let's bundle that up into a package. Let's focus on that and only that, not what didn't, what happened in the past, things that we can't change, things that are out of our control. Let's focus on the things that we can control. And when you shift that focus, it usually does, you know, make a difference over time. Nothing is immediate. This is not immediate. I'm, you know, there's no magic bullet for it. Right. You just have to be willing to do the work. Yeah. So it's not like people should expect, okay, you get that. I don't want to say pep talk because that downplays it, but you know, you get that kind of motivate motivational speech and, and, and you're really just putting things in context. It, you, do you find out people, it takes a while to sink in or some mm -hmm. never sinks in some like it after does. a while it does. You know? It does because it, um, you're making people do things differently than they've mm -hmm. done them before. So it takes some time to get used to, you know, to make something a habit, you have to continually, you know, continuously do it. And so if somebody has gotten in the habit of being so negative when they were positive before, it's going to take time. It took some time to get you there, you know, to that bad space. Um, so it's going to take you some time to get out of it. But as long as you trust yourself, trust the process and, you know, bet on yourself. And, you know, because that's where it comes from, you know, you have to give yourself a shot. If you feel like you're worth it, okay, let's do this. Let's, let, you know, let's take the steps. Let's build a strategy. Let's, let's plan it out to get you to that next step where you want to be. Yeah. I'm not even, I'm not, I'm being serious with this. You got to wonder too, does it make sense for some people to incorporate having some, some professional help, you know, yes. like therapy? Yes, you know, absolutely. You know, psychologist I to help turn anybody. Around, do you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And do you find it works too, if, if you had... It does. Are, Sometimes yeah. when I get um, clients who have just been, I mean, on this roller coaster of, you know, success and failure and back and forth, it weighs on them. Yeah. And, you know, by the time they reach out to me, it may be through the encouragement of their therapist to reach out to somebody, and, you know, that can help them along um, with that. So I'm just a part of that journey. Um, I, for one, I'm not, I'm not a psychologist. I can only speak from what's worked for me and, you know, what's worked for my clients. I've been depressed about being laid off before, you know, too. So I can speak from that firsthand, but I can also give them clear examples, case studies where, you know, this has worked for you know for other people and I think internalizing that and feeling like we're the only one that it's happening to that's usually the biggest issue is people think well I'm embarrassed to talk about this because nobody else is out of a job right now um I'm the only one in my circle who you know who doesn't have a job right now so it's only me not knowing that your neighbor may have been through this your colleague may have been through this before and they can talk you through how, what worked for them and maybe give you some suggestions so I think getting that tribe of support whether it's a therapist a coach, a recruiter, an, you know, an old boss, your spouse, whoever it is, you have to have that support person who can check you when you become too negative and who can help you point out the things that are really great because we forget when we've been beat up so long. We forget what's great about us. So it's good to have that person who can correct us, you know, and call us out about things yeah. that we're doing, you know, that are not so productive, but then remind us of the things that we do, that we do well. Yeah. You're so right about the, uh, roller coaster analogy because mm -hmm. that's what it is like you go you know you're interviewing it looks like it's going great you go a second interview third interview and you're oh, going yeah. up that roller coaster and you're like yeah this is great and then you get ghosted and then <laughs> no feedback and then it goes right, right. and right. that's rough mm -hmm. that's yeah. really and then and then you do it again and again and again and again and it happens that's and you start to brutal. embrace yourself and anticipate oh that. God. So then that's you speak brutal. upon that and you're like, okay, I'm going to get to this last interview and I'm not going to get it. And guess what? You're not yeah. going to get it because yeah. you've said it. You've put that in place. Um, I had one client who kept getting to the final um, candidate and not getting it because she didn't have enough experience. So I said, okay, let's do something different. When you go to that last interview, we have to do something extra. So then we worked on value um, proposition projects where, you know, we were able to get them, um, you know, to put out a plan of the things that 
that could, you know, this is what you stand to gain, put it on, you know, on paper and writing on a chart, you know, something to show that employer, here's what I've done, here's some market research that I've done on my own, this is what I can do to help move you forward. That that clicked, that was the thing that was different. Um, a, among her and um, whatever the, the other candidate pool, I think it was between her and maybe three other people. Um, and then they got narrowed down to her and one other person. That was the differentiator. So you have to find out what is it that I'm not doing already that I can incorporate this last step to hopefully get a different outcome than before. Yes, that's an important point where, where I think people need to do every once in a while, take a step back and see like, mm -hmm. why is it not working? You know, if you keep doing something and it's not working, you need to step back and you know maybe enlist the help of someone like yourself, family, friends, exactly. trusted people, just like, okay, what, what is it? You know, it's, it's, mm -hmm. cause like, let's say in baseball, you could be a big, great baseball player, but you're still going to have a pitching coach or a hitting coach because yeah. they're going to spot something and say, wait, mm -hmm. here, here's why it's not working. And then all exactly. of a sudden you can get it back in gear. So same thing, I right. guess, when you're interviewing, you just need someone to kind of like you to go through and say, mm -hmm. hmm, where, why is it going? Okay. And then you narrow it down. It's like the last interview. And then this is one piece, you're not closing the deal. And here's, here's some stuff maybe you could do to try to close the deal and make exactly. it happen. Yeah. And even when I'm yeah. doing the, the interview coaching, when someone, you know, I listen to the process where they tell me the bottleneck is and we work from there. So if you're applying, not getting any response, okay, let's backtrack. What are you doing before that point in order to, you know, to get a response when you're not getting the response, then what are you doing after that point? Okay. So the next time I want you to do these things. So when you identify where the roadblock is, you're not getting past this point, okay, then that's the point that you need to work on. What is it that you're doing at this level that's not pushing you through? So if it's the interview, if it's the resume, if it's the, the salary, you're not sure how to negotiate that piece and that, you know, that's becoming a turnoff. Any section of the job search can be evaluated, readjusted to get you to where you need to be. That's great. And I got, I, I can't believe it. I'm just looking the time flew by. So, so Link, can fast. I hit you with a few more questions? <laughs> yeah, sure. Because we, we've been always talking for an hour. How, how oh, loud yeah. is that? that yeah, went it quick. went by so fast. Yeah. Oh my God. So, okay. <laughs> so when you mentioned about networking and uh, LinkedIn, so I'll just mm -hmm. put together, I was looking at a few different questions that came in. Uh, a lot of people have trouble like getting on LinkedIn, not literally getting on, but you know, getting their voice heard, mm -hmm. you know, saying things, finding the right people, to how I can get a job. What would you say to, to folks in terms of a combination of networking now is pretty much online for the most part mm -hmm. and to make themselves seen on LinkedIn? Yeah, so for one, you have to have some activity. Mm -hmm. um, so the main things is starting, you know, just start slow. Um, connect. So maybe connect with five to 10 people a week because so you can build your connections. Profiles with connections of 500 um, or more typically have more activity. They're seen by far more um, people, other people that are on LinkedIn. So connect five to 10 people a week. Then um, you want to make sure that your profile is optimized for the role that you want. So if you want a marketing job, you need to be talking about marketing things. Your skills need to reflect the things that are important from a marketing standpoint. Um, from there, you want to engage with your your news feed um, because you have to teach the LinkedIn algorithm what you want to see. So if you want to see more marketing things, then you need to comment on things that are um, that are about marketing. So comment on people's posts, comment on their articles, like, share. It has to be activity on that. Then once you have activity and you, you know, your profile is your profile is in tip top shape, then you want to start reaching out to people. Practice reaching out, maybe reach out to 20 people a week. You're probably only going to get two to three responses from that. That's just the science of it. There's nothing wrong with you. You know, <laughs> nobody thinks that you're a jerk or you know or anything because they're not responding. It's just the, the way of the game. Not everybody is as active on LinkedIn. So you have to reach out to more people to only get just a few responses. So if you reach out to 20 people, know that you're only gonna get maybe two to three responses from that. Um, they need to be people who either do what you do or do what you want to do. They either work where you want to work or um, you know, maybe they work in an industry that you want to be in. Find those people that you feel like you can offer them something um, first in return for their knowledge and maybe down the line a referral for a job opportunity. You know, give to get. You know, it's about give and take, not take, take, take. That's not so, what networking so, so is that's about. Good. So, it's a, a couple of things. So, first of all, you just kind of, kind of dip your toes in the water. You could like what people put online. Mm -hmm. Then maybe you can make some comments. Then you have to. Then you look and find people. Hey, who could we have a mutual benefiting relationship? So it's not just one way. Right. But I could help you. You could help me to start mm -hmm. kind of building it out there. Exactly. If if to net like when you think of networking, like most people hear that and they cringe. Yes. You know, like, right? It's, it's like, <laughs> it's like, see, it's, it just seems like so like fake and phony, you know, uh, 
business card, business cards and handshaking. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) That's what you think about. Yeah. Yeah, Kelly, here's my business card. Nice to meet you. (laughs) Damn glad to meet you. And that's not networking at all. (laughs) So what would you say to people like who, you know, are home? It seems like we're going to be home for a long, you know, stuck at home for a long period of time. I think where you are in Alabama is way different than here. Like I've been, we've been like, it should be the same, but it's not. (laughs) It's eight months. There's no end in sight. So I got to imagine at least, at least, right. A few more months till they get a vaccine and, Right. It's rolled out. So for the next few months where you were still, let's say, stuck at home, and I'm, I'm saying a few months because I'm being positive. That's it. Exactly. A few months and then we're good. <laughs> what would you say to people? Okay, you're tired. You've been trying and trying and it's not working, but all right, <sighs> take a deep breath. And now let's, let's just, we're in the, we're in the stretch. We're in the home stretch. We're almost mm-hmm. there. Like, what can they do to network? What can they do on LinkedIn to really get noticed, to find people to help them with the job, you know, and get that much closer to making it happen? Um, think of a way to help somebody. So if you always think of not to, that you want anything else other than to help another person, mm-hmm. that's the golden rule of networking. How, because it's really about relationships and um, having that person benefit from you and then you can benefit from them at some point or maybe they can put you in contact. Don't reach out to somebody wanting something from them. You know, ultimately what you want, come on, <laughs> we, you know, we know that. <laughs> yeah. um, but that initial conversation cannot be a pitch. It can't be, a, you know, now dealing with the recruiter or hiring manager is a, is a little bit different. You want to pitch, get it, you know, get in there and get out. But the average individual that you should be networking with on LinkedIn, is not always the recruiter, not always the hiring team, not always an HR person. It is the, the person who's doing what you want to do, working, working where you want to work. You want to meet with those individuals, learn whatever you can from them, have a pre list of questions that you want to ask, figure out those things that are most important to you about making that transition. Um, if you know that they're, they're having trouble, I don't know, down loading a document. If you know how to do that, reach out to them and provide that help. If they posted an article, read that article and give them some takeaways, um, something that you learned about it. People love for you to congratulate them about Mm -hmm. things. If you see somebody won an award, mention that, make it about the other person, those favors will come in. They'll they'll start to roll in, but it's a process. It's not going to be immediate. That's why it's important for you to network before you need the job. You know, it should be an ongoing process, not just something that you do when you need something. Yeah, but how do you make that opening thing? Because I think that's what freaks people yeah. out. Like Find that common connection. So yeah. if you went to school together, if you have a um, mutual connection, ask for the, the introduction, um, you know, that way. Um, if you notice that they do something that you want to do, you may tell them that, that they have a similar career path that, as you. You're, connect, you know, connecting with like-minded individuals. But start the conversation. Um, you know, you can tell them, hey, I'm new to LinkedIn, and I'm really getting used to that. You seem like a great person. Our career paths are, are very similar I'd love to learn more about you and what you do um you know it could be something as simple as that or um hey I think our kids played soccer together it could be you know just Mm -hmm. whatever reason find that common connection and then build upon that over time and it doesn't have to be said all in one message the the goal is to keep the conversation going keep the energy flowing keep the relationship growing that's that's really good advice and and I, I don't know if this it partners with it but you mentioned earlier about focusing on LinkedIn profiles would you consider yes. that marketing as well as just you know building a profile? It is because with a great LinkedIn profile, um, you can not only use it to you know build connections for yourself or um, you know to apply for jobs or whatever, but you also can passively bring attention to you. Um, most recruiters are you know a part of some sort of sourcing where they're out finding talent mm-hmm. um, and building that pipeline of candidates. You could be in that pipeline because of how your activity is on your profile, the skills that you have, um, you know, and you're coming up in those searches. So always be ready for your next opportunity, whether you're looking or not, just be prepared, you know, at, at, at all points. And it starts just with the basics of that LinkedIn profile, complete all sections, have a picture. No one wants to talk to somebody they can't see, especially not now when we, you know, we want that, we yearn for those yeah. relationships and stuff and that, that interaction. Um, so, you know, put yourself in a likable situation where you're personable, they can see your personality, let that shine through um, to bring more, more activity to your profile. And would you do the profile like bullet point, bullet by bullet, like a resume, or would you just tell a narrative or try to tell a story or? Mm-hmm. 
it's a combination of both. Uh -huh. um, you know, it's a little bit of that um, personal branding where it's a, it's storytelling um, involved in that specifically in the about section. But then your um, your experience section gives you an opportunity to tell more of the backstory that you, you didn't have room for on the resume. So you can go more into really telling the story about how these things happen, how you were successful, um, you know, and the things that you, you know, that you do well. So um, the LinkedIn profile is not to mirror your resume, it's to complement it. So we don't want to see an exact duplication. It needs to be something that's building upon it from what's on your resume. That's great. So, so it's, it's people look at, I think, LinkedIn profile is a static thing, but you're suggesting, hey, you really want to make it dynamic. It's so a living gonna, document. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's a living document. It should be updated regularly, um, you know, with your successes, your courses that you're taking, the people that you're involved in, it should be always evolving. Wow, this is a lot of information. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe, boy, like in, in, in a short period of time, I mean, in an hour yeah. that went by like five minutes, you I shared know, right? so much great information. That's so amazing. Now, is there anything that, I didn't ask you or people ask me that I asked you and I'll just pretend they were all my questions when they're out there good questions <laughs> and I'm just taking credit for it. But are there anything else that that maybe we we didn't bring up that you feel is really important for, you know, job seekers or someone to advance their career, particularly in this yeah. world we're living in now? Sure. I want, I think I want to leave um, since it's Friday and, yeah. you know, every, a lot of people are excited about it yeah. being Friday. I want to close with some, a little bit of motivation um, for people, Go for it. Yeah. Um, you know, understand that there's nothing wrong with you. There may be some things that you're doing that need to be adjusted. Um, there are a lot of coaches like me at Right Step Resumes who are willing to, you know, to help you out, do some research, connect with us um, so that you can, you know, learn the, the things that you need to be doing right now for this modern um, job search. Um, but understand that the skills that you have right now, an employer is out there looking for someone just like you. You just have to put yourself in the position to be found. You have value right where you are. Learn, the, you know, what makes you different, your it factor, identify that and sell it, sell it like it's no tomorrow. And people hire people, they don't hire necessarily just your skills. So it's more about being relatable, um, letting your personality shine through what makes you different, what makes you unique, sell that, you know, own it. That's fantastic. What a great way to end it. Yeah. But that, that's fantastic. That's great advice going into a weekend. I gotta tell you, maybe have you ever thought of this? That, that just to go out on a tangent, now that we're, well, let me loosen my tie, it's, it's, it's Friday. <laughs> I'm going. Yes. I'm going for the like. Everyone's casual now, so I'm. I'm going across the trend. So that's why I'm. I'm kind of yeah. wearing this. Although I'm wearing my jeans underneath. But <laughs> have you thought about this? What about having like maybe you should have some like uplifting podcast. You'd be great at it. Just focus on you know. I thought positivity, about that. <laughs> all that kind of stuff because yeah. you, you you come across so strong in that, and that's and that's so important. You know, and I think it meshes in with job seekers because they need that because they're beaten down, mm -hmm. they're beaten up, they're tired. You know they're frustrated and you yes. need that you need that shot it's like a caffeine shot right yeah you need and that. we need, need that, that sense of community you, you know yeah. yeah yeah that's but you're great at it. and, and I, I i thank you now i can see why you're such a successful career coach because you speak with people and they probably walk out of your office and like they just feel great about themselves they feel motivated they yeah, and have come actionable in. steps yeah. to help them achieve their goals and i don't force goals on people it's yeah. what you want and i'm helping you get there all right, all right. let me I, I lied i have one more question i'm gonna ask. do okay. you find out i'm curious i bet you i know i didn't know the answer like when people walk into your office right and they come in and they head down can't make eye contact feeling just you know just feeling awful and then at the end you see they're like more like perked up right mm -hmm. at the end of the conversation yeah, and you see they're yeah. making eye contact they're smiling does that i bet you that happens right all the time. It, it does because sometimes people just need to be reminded of yeah. how great they are and i can tell it just on the page you know the resume that they think is so trash or whatever they bring yeah. it to, you know to me and i'm like i can see it though i can see through there because i've i've looked at enough resumes to know who's got the it factor. You just don't know how to communicate it. That's it. And when you give people solutions and let them know that there's a way to fix this, they typically will breathe a, a, a sigh of relief and, um, you know, and they're ready to move forward. And it's really just being open and honest with them about the fact that, look, I don't know everything. I don't know it all, but I have a team of colleagues that, you know, I work with every single day that if I don't mm -hmm. know something personally, I can put you in contact with somebody and we can get this thing fixed. There's nothing that you're going through right now that can't be fixed to some degree. You may not get that dream job right away, but there's steps in between. We can get you there just one step at a time. That's all you need. You know, don't try to get it all done in a day. One well, step, <laughs> one step advice. at a time. Yeah, bite-sized you know pieces. That's fantastic. You, you cheered up my day. I feel fantastic. I feel great. I can do anything now. <laughs> so it works. So, so Ashley, how can people find you? 
You can find me um, either on LinkedIn at Ashley J. Watkins or on writestepresumes.com. That's write, W-R-I-T-E, like you write something down, stepresumes.com. That's great. So I would, I would advise everybody to check her out. As you can tell from watching, she's amazing, brilliant, smart, Thank fantastic you. advice. And, uh, and yeah, you know, if you have any trouble in your search, just at least give her a call, talk to her, right? Send an yeah, email. What's offer, the best way? Send yep, an email, I do call. offer free consults. Yep. And okay. you can actually, from my um, website or from my LinkedIn profile, you can book an appointment right there. It's a free 30 minute call. Great. Now, do you also do when people just need cheering up? To give a little free motivational pitch every um, once in a while. They can like actually for... <laughs> follow follow my social media. I do a lot. I do Monday motivations do every okay, week. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So so <laughs> so add that to it. Well, excellent, Ashley. It was great speaking with you, and I'm so glad you shared all this great advice with people. I think it's fantastic. I think when people watch this video, you know, they could just. Say, I, I would say and I should have done this while we're talking, taking notes on everything, because there's just so much seriously, so much really good information, useful, actionable information. You know, a lot of times, people give advice, but. Yeah, it's just, you put can't it really to put work. it to place, you know, yeah, here yeah, yeah. it's like everything you're saying, you do it, you know, you could do it right mm -hmm. away. And that's amazing. So thank yep. you so much. Excellent. Thank you for having me. Oh, my pleasure. This Have a great, great weekend.